All righty. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'd just like to welcome everybody and thank you all for joining today's webinar, Protect Your Weakest Link, Policy-Based Security, powered by Intune. Excuse me. Before we get started, I'd like to go over just a few housekeeping items. Um, everybody is muted and your video is off, but if you'd like to ask a question, please feel free to use the chat feature or wait until the Q&A portion of the presentation, and I can unmute you if you'd like. Second of all, this webinar is being recorded and it will be sent out to you afterwards with the deck. <coughs> and lastly, if you have any follow-up questions after the webinar has ended, please feel free to email <coughs> solutions, solutions at diopath.com and we will get them directed to the right person. So getting started, first I'd like to introduce our panelists. Today we have Jesse Alexander, our Chief Revenue Officer. Second, we have Sean Trojek, our security practice, practice lead. And third, we have Sean Mahalovitz, who is our senior cloud engineer. And from here, I will hand it over to you, Jesse. Thank you so much, Jordan. I appreciate that. Hey, and thanks to everybody for joining us today. Uh, just to quickly go over the objectives. First of all, you're all here because we all have a learning mentality, right? Trying to figure out the things that we don't know and to augment those with knowledge that we can get from other sources. So this is a great place for that one. Second of all, um, the, this webinar is really about getting any data, any time, any device, and that's a security risk. So we wanna talk about um, th uh, this topic because it's pertinent to the issues that we have today for supporting end users. Um, and with Intune and Autopilot, those are some of the latest technology that we've got from, that we're getting from Microsoft. And, you know, like they used to say, you can hire IBM and, you know, you know, no one's going to get fired for hiring IBM. Intune and Autopilot is a Microsoft tool. It's got lots of development. It works with so much of the stuff that we've got. So let's talk about how to modernize our workforce by using uh, some more Microsoft tools. We'll also talk some about the different use cases of where we've had some successes, where there's been some failures to help you can understand the lessons that we and others have learned along the way of implementing and, uh, and how implementing has helped mature an IT organization. Uh, and then we'll talk some about uh, Diopath uh, and, and how we help clients across multiple industries deploy and support Intune and Autopilot. So with that, I'd like to pass off to Sean. Hey, thank you for that. So yeah, just from a, a more general perspective, we listed a few bullets here of things that can that can really help uh, that that NT can help you with. Um, and some of this is run across over into other areas, but specifically from a security standpoint, I'm always concerned about inventory. We want to have a good understanding of you know what what we have, what's what's in our um, uh, inventory, what types of systems are out there, particularly for those remote endpoints. And so that's a, the area where Intune can really shine. Uh, we found that it really makes things like inventory reconciliation super easy. You can just kind of go into the, the uh, inventory screen inside of Intune and then map that against other tools that you may have, such as your uh, remote management situation or your uh, even your security agents. Uh, the other thing is just helping with patching. So just by having that in tune uh, deployed uh, out to these remote systems, uh, it just it, it makes patching so much easier because you can control that from a central spot rather than having to worry about is the laptop on, is it disconnected, all those types of things that's going to happen. But with Intune, it just makes the things uh, much faster from from our perspective. Um, and then security agents and the remote uh, management agent deployment. Uh, lots of times what we find that even in the post um, or in the COVID world, what happens is you've got uh, users who are out there who need to have the latest security agents. They need to have the latest ways to uh, control their device if we didn't get into it, perform some remote troubleshooting, those types of things. And Intune just really makes it easy to get those agents out there, get those deployed. And there's, you know, there's, there's a dozen different ways to do things, but ultimately from my perspective, um, having a good solid uh, process to get those out there, uh, it just enhances your overall security program. And then, of course, just in general, software deployment. So if you can get your software moving through uh, Intune, rather than having users install their own software, or they, they go out to the service desk and try to you know, say, hey, I need this or this program uh, installed, can you help me with it? And it's kind of a laborious process. If you can get the things packaged up inside of Intune, uh, just it's almost like a click of a button uh, getting getting that software deployed 
And the last two, just uh, more from a facilitation standpoint, uh, helping with remote device wiping. So in the event that someone loses a laptop, that's always a concern or loses a, a uh, mobile device, that's a concern. And especially um, if that does happen, we wanna make sure that those drives are encrypted. And so if you've got Intune controlling those devices, uh, getting that bit locker or an encryption situation taken care of so that uh, those lost, lost laptops don't leak data into, into uh, the wrong hands, then it's really kind of a win-win for everyone. So hopefully that kind of makes sense to everybody and let's go to the next slide. Okay, this, this slide's mine. So really, um, I guess we'll start off by talking about what is Intune. What, what, is it, what does it do, right? Microsoft Intune is a cloud-based endpoint management solution. Uh, it simplifies app and device management by providing tools to deploy, configure, manage devices. It supports mobile devices, desktop computers, and virtual endpoints. This can be laptops, tablets, phones, uh, running Windows, Linux, iOS, Mac OS, or Android. Uh, protects access and data on organization owned and personal devices. Accounts and enrolled devices are protected by apps and device policies. It includes compliance and reporting features. Reports, reporting and notifications can be set up to communicate issues found. Um, compliance can control access to corporate resources. So in, in a nutshell, that, that's basically what Intune is. We will go a little bit deeper into how it is configured um, and what specifically um, it controls. Can you go to the next slide, please? So, in the process of modernizing your client workforce um, with Intune, um, there's a couple of steps and to understand first. And so Intune um, helps with organizations to move it as, as organizations move to support hybrid and remote workforces. There's a challenge there with managing the different devices that access the organization resources. So employees need to collaborate and work from basically anywhere and securely access that content to these resources. And admins need to protect organizational data and manage the end users and devices uh, wherever they work. Well, we can utilize Intune to help with all these challenges and tasks. And we do this by, by actually configuring the Intune uh, portal. So Intune's a SaaS um, service provided by Microsoft as we as stated before. Um, devices uh, are managed uh, by being enrolled. So first, before we can manage any devices, a user has to be in Azure AD and a device has to be enrolled to Intune. So the enrollment process can happen in two different ways. It's either user-based or administrative-based. Um, so we can say end user can uh, bring their own personal device and install a company portal and enroll into Intune that way, or a corporate device can be joined via Azure AD join and then automatically enrolled into Intune. Um, and of course we have autopilot that could pre-provision and enroll the device into Intune. Um, administrators can join this via group policies if you have uh, an existing active on-premise active directory environment. Um, it can be configured to work with configuration manager, co-management. Um, and then of course there's bulk enrollment where we just enroll everything at once. Um, moving on, um, so once devices are in to Intune, um, they, ha they have a policies applied to them. That's device configuration profiles. And these profiles control um, administrative templates um, that can be applied to the each device, uh, security baselines 
So pre-configured settings that can, can control the security on the device or just Intune settings uh, catalog um, of controls that are that can be configured for different options within the device. So we can also have to, uh, or we can also manage applications as well. So we can do this by deploying applications and that can be done um, by assigning, uh, or adding the app like Sean was saying, adding app and uh, assigning that to a specific group or user. Um, and you can either make it available so a user can go and download and install the app on their own, or you can make it required, which pushes that app to that device, um, whether they want it or not. Um, we can also use app, app configuration pro policies with them applications that'll control like the settings on them applications um, to eliminate problems when setting up, um, that sort of thing, or security controls that you want put in place that you don't want end users to have the ability to set on their own. So we use app configuration policies for that. <laughs> Now we can get go into device deployment, which includes all the above, um, plus um, uh, actually provisioning the whole device from scratch. So that is Windows Autopilot provisioning. Um, it's a collection of technologies used to set up and pre-configure new devices, getting them ready for production use. We'll discuss this more in the next slide. Um, let's move on to access controls. Now, here, here's a little bit of the security side um, of Intune. We use uh, we can use controls such as conditional access policies. These can be used to restrict access to devices or applications based on location, compliance, or risk. Um, th these are really good um, to use in compliance with your uh, compliance policies and your uh, app configuration policies. Um, we also can use some controls uh, like role-based access controls um, and privilege identity management. Both of these are used really on the administrative side to control who is accessing what resources in, in the Intune portal or in Azure in a whole. Next, we move on to device security. So device compliance policies. These are actually the policies that are set in place uh, to protect organizational data by requiring users and devices to meet some requirements. Compliance is policies and then to define the rules and settings that users devices meet to be compliant. Now this could be like, uh, you have to have antivirus installed or you have to be um, your, all your updates have to be up to date, um, or we won't allow you to, to, to connect to our resources, whether that be application or a data that's sitting on a server in Azure or, or, or something like that. Um, but that's device compliance policies set this, these rules. We can also apply protection policies to applications. And that's where app protection policies come into play, where we do the same thing, but on an application level. So if you don't meet specific requirements, you're not allowed to access that data. And we can also protect that, we, we protect corporate data by setting these uh, rules up. So moving on. Um, we'll discuss a little bit uh, Microsoft Defender. This is really an uh, endpoint security platform designed, designed to help enterprise networks prevent, detect, investigate, and respond to advanced threats. It's used in combination of a combination of technologies built into Windows 10 and 11 and Microsoft's cloud service, uh, including endpoint behavioral sessions, um, cloud security, analytics, threat intelligence. Um, these are some of the 
features um, supported by Defender. Um, Defender is highly integrated into uh, Intune, um, which I should say in the Endpoint Management Center in Microsoft. So you'd be able to uh, see the same devices that are in Intune. You'll be able to see um, their status, their Defender for Endpoint status, if, if there's uh, any issues with their alerts, notifications can be set up to notify. And then last, as a part of security, we have always on VPN. Um, you can al also use um, Microsoft Tunnel. So always on VPN forces a tunnel to your environment, um, forcing all data to be encrypted across that environment. Um, Microsoft Tunnel can be used for iOS, iPad OS, and Android enterprise devices using modern authentication and conditional access if needed. Hey, Sean, um, before we move on to the next slide, I had a question come in. It's a, a two-part question. And they're asking, uh, my company already has an Azure environment set up, and we want to enroll our end users' devices into Intune. What is required to add these devices? And then secondly, how do I get remote access to our employees' devices that are off-site? Mm, that's a great question. So it's a couple of things. Uh, initially, you need to, to have your devices need to support um, using Intune. So that's Windows 10 or... Uh, 1709 or higher, or Windows 11, uh, or iOS. Um, you have to have an Intune license, Intune license applied to the to the user, um, so that they they're allowed to be enrolled into Intune. Um, and then end users <laughs> must be in Azure AD, so there has to be a <laughs> user, and that user gets assigned um, to that device. So once you have that, then you plan, build out your environment um, and evaluate. Um, once you're set up, tested, then you can enroll your devices into Intune. And this is done in a couple different ways that I, I kind of described a little bit above, but user-based, you can either have your end users um, self-enroll and that can be done with the company portal app installation or you can allow them to join their devices to Azure AD. Um, and then the third way for the end user is auto, autopilot. And we'll discuss that a little bit later, but pre-provisioning pre via purchasing devices from a vendor um, that would be automatically set up and then get enrolled into, into Intune. Um, but if then options aren't available, then we have administrative based enrollment, which means end user would need to bring their device into into a central location so an administrator can configure the device, enroll the device, um, join it, um, configure co management if if that's needed. Um, and then I guess the second part um, is can can you repeat the second part, please? Yeah, so the second part is what is required? I'm sorry, um, how do I get remote access to the employees' devices who are off site? Well, remote access, um, I mean, once the device is in Intune, um, then you can push, you know, uh, whatever VPN client um, is needed through uh, application uh, deployment via Intune. So that would be the, the answer to that second question. So that, the hardest part here would be uh, getting the devices enrolled. Awesome, thank you. All right. We move, yep, thank you. All right, so autopilot. Windows Autopilot is a framework by Microsoft to provision Windows machines without going through that painful process of re-imaging. Um, I, I know a lot of people have probably been through that, and it's not fun. So Microsoft developed this, um, and you've probably seen it a lot. If you get a new device, uh, OS is installed, um, but there is options in that in Windows 10 and in Windows 11 um, 
to reset to factory, uh, you know, default, just kind of wipe everything, all the data off. Well, it uses, Autopilot uses this technology um, to pre-provision machines. Um, and it, uh, it really can, it can be done one of two ways. So the pre-provisioning can be uh, purchased. You can purchase a new device that's pre-provisioned and it link linked to your Azure tenant, uh, your Intune deployment, and then that device can be shipped straight to um, a, a end user. And the end user will open that device up like it's brand new, like, like you would get a new device. Um, the only difference is it would be already pre-provisioned to your tenant. So end user would perform the login process with their uh, corporate account. That corporate account would then um, allow them access into the, the Intune tenant. Um, it would push down all the policies um, and software required and just provision it on the fly. Um, by the by, the end of the setup, um, the user would be logged in with their desktop and the required apps that they need, um, because all this is pre-provisioned on the back end through Autopilot. Um, the other way is uh, to to install that image on a, a machine and have an administrator um, perform add that device to the Autopilot group. Um, and then send that out and they would go through the same exact process. Um, we can also, uh, we can, we can reset, repurpose devices, recover devices, um, through autopilot. So we can push out and have it, uh, automatically reprovisioned from scratch, like a, a new user, uh, like when a new user would get the laptop, or if you want to reuse an existing device and send that to another user, we would reprovision it um, so that that user would get that fresh start, start just like you would when you open up a brand new laptop. Okay, um, next slide. Um, okay, so as you can see, uh, Microsoft Intune has been recognized as a leader in endpoint management by some uh, big names here. Um, so, so it's not, it's not something new. It's been out for a while and, uh, and, and it's recognized. That's all I have. There we go. Can you hear me now? There we go. Yeah, so just an example use case. This, no, I won't cover it too much, but we had an entity, it was about five, 600 employees, um, and they needed to roll out Intune and want to have better control uh, over their endpoints. Uh, part of that, they had some, some other uh, deployment software as well that were kind of linked into all of this. Ultimately, for the most part, uh, this, this process went fairly smoothly. Um, you know, we were able to get, I'd say, good 95% of the devices onboarded uh, quite quickly. But I just want to kind of talk about some of the, the gotchas that we had experienced, just some of the hangups, uh, particularly on uh, legacy equipment. That's where we really struggled the most. So just to kind of uh, swing back to, to Sean's point about Windows 10, uh, you know, kind of having that available. And then what we found is just, uh, you know, part of it was trying to get uh, um, the encryption turned on while we were out there as well. And so that's where that legacy equipment situation really started to hurt us to, to, on those uh, those outlier type of machines. And so what you really want to do is come through and uh, make a good planning exercise, and you want to do some nice coordination. Because half the battle is not just you know flipping the switches here; it's it's talking to the people and figuring out when they're going to be available. Um, you have to go out and physically touch some machines. Unfortunately, the, uh, particularly those more legacy machines. And what we found is, in many cases, it was actually more cost effective to just replace the machine and move forward uh, rather than kind of waste time on these uh, on the legacy hardware type situations. So overall, it's a good experience. Uh, we certainly learned a lot. This one was a, was a couple of years ago for us, so we've certainly done some more since then. But uh, I think just in terms of improvement of their you know, capabilities, being able to manage things, like I mentioned earlier on the call, being able to inventory and see what's out there. 
being able to deploy that encryption and all the security agents and so forth that we're looking for from a security standpoint was definitely a win-win from my perspective. Okay, next slide, please. Well, Sean, before you uh, before I go to this slide, um, you know, you talked some about the the use cases and the experiences that sort of thing. You know, with legacy, if you could go back, Jordan, you did talk about the um, you know the different ways of rolling it out, right? Because this is a this is not just a technology change management; it's a human behavior change management. So it's governed by policies and procedures, that sort of thing. So you know, our 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 it's easy to roll it out when it's new equipment, right? It is, it is, it is. Oh, so it's, some, go ahead, yeah. sorry, go ahead. So in some cases, what you may end up doing is even getting a thumb drive or a, you know, a DVD in some situations just to uh, facilitate that kind of initial reset. Yeah. And a part of that is you want to capture that user's data if you can. Let's say if you've got one drive out there, that'll certainly make things a lot of, a lot easier for you. But then there's always, depending on the user, those, those pockets of, uh, of data that they may keep outside of one drive. So you would try to handle that situation. Yeah. And the other thing I would say is in some cases, and not particular to, to this one, but we have had organizations that would just go out to you know, uh, large, uh, I don't want to say it by name, but um, large uh, shopping centers and, and acquire hardware and and log on and, and you know join the corporate domain and, and all kinds of things uh, that way. And so you have to kind of undo those situations as well. So right. those those uh, certainly make things fun as you're moving through it, and something um, interesting that uh, just just kind of add to this a little bit more technical, but uh, there's kind of this perception out there in a lot of cases that you have to have your 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 uh, endpoints uh, domain joined, uh, i.e. on-premises domain joined, in order to access on-premises domains, and that's not necessarily the case. So there's ways even around that, or you can even even uh, set up. Um, uh, depending on what you're trying to do, you can kind of pre-provision a VPN that will allow you to do different types of hybrid join, uh, hybrid join scenarios as well. So there's some options out there that may um, uh, may not uh, be in the common awareness, if you will. <clears throat> you, you don't have to send in the device. We can do it. We can work on it remote. We just have to be creative in how we do it and planful because all of this right. stuff is, you know, what I've heard from the two of you guys is is Intune and Autopilot is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Technically, it can do so much stuff for us. Oh, let me tell you, I got goosebumps when you said that. And the reason <laughs> I did is uh, back in the day, was, you know, I was doing you know things like this 20 years ago, and what we would do is uh, Microsoft had this really archaic system for uh, deploying systems, and there's script scripts together, and there was bailing wire and chewing gum and uh, duct tape involved, and all these different types of ways to to uh, roll out systems, but this thing is just it's so much better. And granted, you know, it's not perfect, but uh, I think we've come a long way, and I, I really am enjoying seeing this thing evolve. Absolutely, and and Jesse, to your point, um, planning, 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 very important. Um, even you know before you know uh, getting into Intune, you know the the stages to get that data off the devices so that you can reprovision them. Um, all that is planning and testing and I don't stress that enough. Uh, don't just jump into it um, expecting it to be, uh, you know, the miracle tool um, because without that, you know, it's, it's, it's going to fail. So, yeah. well, it's also communication, right? You know, Absolutely. it's the same sort of thing of you can do it all, but if you, if you're, if you're not compliant as a company, as a user base, all that kind of stuff, you have challenges. I mean, I think, uh, I think Sean, uh, M, you mentioned that, you know, the, the issues of just like forcing people to comply with, um, updates within 90 days or, or DLP, that kind of stuff. Those are things that those are controls we have in the, in the, in the tools that we have, but it becomes a corporate culture sort of thing as to whether we enforce those right right and 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 this really i mean we're looking at protecting your you know corporate data right so yeah. w when that comes into play you know we we need to make sure people are updating their you know antivirus and updating uh, the the os you know to, to, to support, not only to support like Intune, if it's joined Intune, there's a minimum require, requirement to, uh, on a patch level to, yeah. to join Intune, right? And that keeps moving. That's just a window that keeps going forward. So you can't not patch. Eventually you will be unsupported. 
Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And and we know that Intune and Autopilot together as a deployment tool, you know, improve security. It, re, it, it improves the speed and the productivity of being able to get people deployed um, and, and reduces the IT effort up front. Uh, it allows you to do things like you said of shipping devices straight from a vendor and letting then the end user do a final deployment of the device. I'd, I'd even take it one step uh, further on that point. Uh, just kind of going back to what I was talking about uh, 20 years ago, the idea then was to uh, you know, very quickly, if you could, you know, reprovision the users, and certainly there's going to be a cost associated with. Uh, let, let's say they have a laptop, and somehow they, you know, they do something to it. It just, it just happens, and you need to redo the device for whatever reason. Uh, with Intune, I remember one of um, one of the guys I work with. They came in and showed this to me one day. Uh, this was probably about four or five years ago. He walked in, um, put the device in, uh, did something on the uh, on the console side on the cloud. Reset the device and the thing just rebuilt itself. And so, if you think from the perspective of user who's out there in the field, you know he's he's got to keep working, he's got to do his job, and so on and so forth. And somehow he managed to to uh, do something to his device or something got in there, whatever. Hey, just rebuild the thing and off you go. Let's let's uh, he's only down two or three hours and, and we're up and running again instead of waiting for two or three days to reprovision at the office. Yeah, absolutely. That's where tools like OneDrive and you know having. Office 365 uh, apps um, come into play, right? So all that data is not stored locally on that device. We can go in there and reset that device without a major interruption because we don't have to worry about managing that end user's data. Right, absolutely. And so what we've got is now an out of box experience that's different than it was before where you get delivered to you a box that's fully functional, you just log in and start working, which is great for that initial touch of a new employee to that device. But anytime something's needed, whether it's a, a wipe, a refresh, that kind of stuff, then it becomes much more difficult. So so this is better. And by the way, uh, Sean T, you weren't talking about 20 years ago being SCCM, were you? Uh, no. Uh, we used, um, I, won't, I won't call it out by name, but there's a, a thing called PXE, so Pixie Boot Standard. Yeah. That's, that's what I was using then. Yep. Well, I think nine, you know, one of the other benefits of, of auto, uh, into an autopilot is that it, it is just the enhancement in the next generation of the, of the Microsoft tools and 90% of our, 91% of our enterprise clients, you know, are, are using that right now. Isn't that correct? Yeah. So this kind of migration is really for, for most of our clients, most of the people we're talking about. They're going to be switching from like an SCCM to into an autopilot. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm, I'm a lot of times. Yes. And that's where the, the configuration manager, SCCM system center configuration manager, that's where the configuration manager co-management comes into play. Yeah. So we can, we can then transition them devices that are already managed in system center configuration manager, um, SCCM, and we can move them right into Intune. But by adding that integration. Yep. So as they move from one to the other, uh, do you have any concerns or lessons learned that you might want to impart to the team here? Um, I, I mean, I guess really it just becomes a, you know, a where is it controlled uh, scenario, right? So there's a lot of configuration on the configuration manager side where um, it's more integrated with Active Directory, on-premise Active Directory, um, it, or is required to be integrated to on-premise Active, Active Directory as where Intune is not, right? So Intune can be cloud-only devices, um, you know, <laughs> cloud going forward, you know, monitoring management, uh, which means uh, my users in the cloud, my devices in the cloud, and now Intune, my management is in the cloud. So. I mean, it's really just moving that that whole design, the architecture, over to a cloud environment, mm -hmm. and uh, and making it a little bit more. I think it's simpler to use, you know, yeah. than a system center configuration yeah. manager. Sure. And yeah. before we leave this slide, you did talk about co-management, right? Can you talk about when you might want to stay in a co-managed environment? Uh, yeah, so you would implement a co-managed environment when you already have all your devices in configuration manager. So, and and you're looking to transition to making them cloud only. 
getting rid of the on-premise Active Directory environment and moving to just modern workspace, uh, which includes, you know, having your devices only in the cloud, having your users only in the cloud, you know, kind of transitioning from a hybrid to cloud only. Awesome, yeah. thanks. Yeah, I think and just to add just a little bit to that, I think we're seeing more and more companies that are, you know, kind of born in the cloud, so to speak. So it's just, you know, that's, that's what's happening. Um, you know, I think there's kind of an overall trend in that direction, at least for companies that can do it. And maybe right. some, some can't necessarily do that. So. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Sean. Well, great. Let's go to the next slide then. So, um, look, I, you know, hopefully this last 30 minutes has been helpful for everybody to learn a little bit more about um, Intune and autopilot and how it, it, how it can help you improve your business, the security, your IT operations, reduce your risk, um, it, it improve your, the, the uh, effectiveness and productivity of your IT resources. Right? And so. You know, this, this webinar is brought to you by Diopath, and we're a, um, we're a top tier MSP, MSSP, that we've been in business for 35 years with about 700 technicians with sites all over the United States and across the world. Um, and so this, this support of the end users with Intune with Autopilot is one of the key uh, managed services that we provide. What you're hearing from Sean and Sean is actually an aspect of the technology um, advising that we provide with our virtual CIO uh, and virtual CISO services there as well, because there's, there's not just the technology change management that has to be advised, how does this fit into with what we're doing, but also a human behavior and organizational behavior change management has to happen of how do we put in what controls with processes with procedures. And all of that really goes into effect to differentiate Diopath in, in really three main ways. And the first is that business first approach where we're trying to advise you on how to use the technology to, to move the needle on your business. And the advice that you get from Sean and Sean and others within Diopath really helps move that along. Um, within Diopath also, we, uh, you know, we have uh, all of those different sites, about 700 technicians, like we talked about. But in our, um, uh, our, our security practice, we've had that for 20 plus years, and it's based on redundant 24 by 7 socks that we have. Um, and, and, and also is predicated on some really intense work with the federal government, where we actually helped create the NERC SIP uh, framework. Um, and we continue to leverage NIST and other control frameworks for our clients as well. And, and so hope to do the same for you. Let's go to the next slide as well. So if that first differentiator is the business first approach, the second is really where we help you mature your IT services. Now, IT services, as you know, are not monolithic. It's not, hey, my department is, is mature or it's not. It's all of the different services across all of the different towers that you have in your business. So it can be end user provisioning, it can be your, your, your storage arrangement, it could be your cloud management, it could be your, your security, any number of those different towers that we're looking at. And every company, as they're buying companies, as they're growing, their maturity in those different towers and those different services um, is at different points. Some are more chaotic and, and reactive to what's going on in the industry, and some where we're more proactive and we have our processes and procedures documented and we follow them, and, and they're, they're very mature. One of the things that Diopath does better than other companies is we help you identify where you are uh, in that journey of maturing your IT uh, stack and your processes and procedures around that to help make sure that you are compliant to the standards that you want to be, whether it's just your IT, uh, whether it's just your cybersecurity insurance policy, whether it's a SOC 2 type 2 uh, or a CMMC type 2 or ISO or whatever, we're going to help you figure that out so that you get to a more predictable IT operations. You have documented processes and procedures that actually work and help you minimize the cost and effort involved in using the tools and deploying technology to your to your revenue generators to the part of the business that actually matters for you because the IT is the enabler for that and that gets you to the point where 
you now have that mature model, predictable results. You're implementing technology, not just for technology's sake, but, but technology to help drive the business and grow your value, while also reducing costs and reducing risk uh, to the business, which is what your C-suite cares about, and we have to help deliver. Let's go to the next slide. So if the first one is the business first approach, the second is the IT maturity, the third main differentiator as, Di as Diapath can help you is really in terms of how we engage with you, the client engagement model. And ultimately what we do is we help perform the IT operations for your business that allows us to help elevate you and your team to be more strategic, to figure out, hey, how do I roll out into an autopilot to help improve the delivery of or the deployment and the support of end users in a more secure, more capable model. So when you know that below the waterline, all of the things around your uh, end user support and your infrastructure are all getting handled, that allows us to help you elevate so that you can do those value added services that drive your business and your revenue. If you go to the next slide, please. Um, Diopath does have a breadth of end-to-end -end services, right? The five are on here, details below that, but it really comes down to this. We provide managed, end uh, managed support for the end users around remote support, on-site support, and the depot services that Intune and Autopilot is a key part of. And as you're hearing here from Sean and Sean, the depot that we're used to with the image base and all that is absolutely changing. And our depot works with you as you roll this out to be able to register users with autopilot with autopilot you know identifying the machine ids and the users they're going to inventory the the break fix that's involved and all that so we definitely have that with our managed services our second is the managed knock it's the services around server storage network everything around your cloud management whether it's on-premise whether it's cloud or whether it's hybrid uh, and we specialize in Azure and AWS, and that's really where our key focuses are. And then finally, the managed security services, which is really where we help you um, prevent intrusions, detect intrusions, and also remediate. And it's all around the XDR, the SIM, with the 24 by 7 redundant socks that we talked about, and the advising to help make sure you're doing the right thing in a, in a way that's optimized for the resources, time, money that you have but also the security risk of those services and the technology that you have and the data that you have as well. Um, so with that, those are the things that Diopath does. We, we think we do it better than anybody else. Uh, certainly this aspect of the Intune as a deployment model, the newer deployment model to help our end users, we can help you if you're interested. Uh, and certainly today's conversation is to help give you a better feel for how do you roll out how do you support your end users and reduce secure, uh, improve security and reduce costs as you're thinking about how to use these tools for you? If you go to the next slide then. So with that, Jordan, I'd like to pass it off to you to kind of wrap up our conversation today that Sean and Sean led a little about Diopath and, and, talk, and, and answer any other questions that might've come in. Yeah, sure. So we had a few more questions come in. Um, the first one is what licensing is required to use Intune? Okay, so I can answer that one. Um, typically, most of your Microsoft 365 or enterprise mobility and security licensing, uh, it includes an Intune license. Um, you can purchase it a la carte, so if for individuals, um, but your office uh, E1s and E3s, they're not going to include an Intune license. Um, for education, I think there's education A5 and A3. Um, on the government side, it's G3 and G5. Um, th Microsoft 365 Pre Business Premium has an Intune license. So um, quite a few licenses actually support it. You have users that are sitting in Azure, most likely uh, they're licensed with an Intune license if it has the higher end licensing tied to them. Awesome. Thank you. Um, the next question that we had come in was, can we manage server operating systems with Intune? Uh, unfortunately, no, it's the endpoint uh, device management solution only. So 
it's not the, the, the designed for server management. Um, you can use Intune to support BDI workloads hosted on a Windows 10, 11, a multi-session host. Um, and servers are listed in the Microsoft Endpoint Manager um, for management of uh, Microsoft Defender for endpoints. So if you have Microsoft Defender installed on them servers, they do show up in that portal, um, but you can't you can't uh, lo load apps on them and control policies and that sort of thing. Um, thank you. And then our last question that we got in was, what is required for autopilot provisioning? What is required for autopilot provisioning? Um, I think that kind of goes along with uh, part partly with the the question that was answered before, but. Um, I mean, you 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 need a, a supported OS um, licensing. Um, end users must be an AD uh, or Azure AD. I'm sorry. Um, and then the devices need to get enrolled into Intune. Got it. Um, Machine once, ID and the user ID, right? Yeah. Well, and if they're in <laughs> Intune, you you get that um, th that into it. Um, the other thing is. Uh, you know, autopilot has to be built out in the tenant, um, which means Intune has to be built out because autopilot is built on top of Intune. Um, it uses the same policies and config configuration policies and application policies to deploy the software. Um, so all that has to be built out. Um, and then you could, you know, uh, in either uh, purchase new device from a vendor um, that supports it, give them their tenant ID. Um, then they can have that pre-provisioned and that can be sent directly to a user and that user will get the out-of-box experience. Um, or uh, administrators can can load a default image on there um, and add that to that autopilot group. And that'll be yes. like a machine hash or something like that. That's a manual process. I was thinking about that, that server question. This is good. It's kind of like there's more than more than one way to do things, but um, I was thinking like kind of modern modern cloud uh, you know, architecture. I mean, ideally, you want to do you know some sort of uh, infrastructure as a you know where it's as code uh, might be a better way to do that. Uh, I mean, you can manage to, to some degree. You can do uh, you know virtual instances and so forth, and, and have Intune come in there and do some things. But it, it's kind of like uh, you know a spoon versus a, a fork for eating ice cream, maybe. There might be a little bit better ways to do some of those things. For, yeah, that's my, my perspective anyway. <laughs> I mean, Microsoft does have tools out there to manage your server workloads. Um, they're just not they're they're not like Intune, so they're a little bit yeah. different, a little bit differently. Well, and we actually had two more questions come in while you guys were answering those. So. Um, the first one is Diopath uses their own tools to manage devices with their MSP model. So do they transition to using the clients in tune for it? Um, can, can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay. Um, it says Diopath uses their own tools to manage devices with their MSP model. So do they transition to using the clients in tune for it? Oh, I understand the question. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, we're, we're flexible. So, uh, you know, certainly we have our own uh, tools and preferences and so forth. And, and uh, if we, I think we flip back to that slide along the maturity model and get back to that one real quick. Um, you know, essentially we'll try to work with you uh, where you're at. And so sometimes we'll come in and it is chaos and it takes time to, to get to a more, um, you know, stable approach. And so what we tend to do is we'll recommend, hey, this is this is what we think you should do along the way to get you uh, more stable. Uh, but at the same time, we're not going to just uh, throw out everything that you have. Uh, we'll, we'll work with you. So hopefully that helps answer the question. Yep. And then the next question that came in says, uh, autopilot. Sorry, hold on one second. Autopilot require licenses, or is it included with Intune? Uh, it's actually included with Intune. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. So that's why I say it's built on top of Intune. So it's just another, it's a, it's a provisioning method within Intune. Yeah. 
Awesome. Well, that's all the questions that have came in for today. Um, I'd like to wrap up and just thank everybody for joining today's webinar. Thank you to our panelists for leading this webinar for us. Um, the presentation and recording will be emailed out either later this afternoon or early tomorrow morning, as well as listed on our YouTube channel. Um, oh, I'm sorry. We just got one more question in, if that's okay with you guys. <laughs> it says, Does Intune integrate with your MSSP EDR? Uh, yes, so, and that's what I was talking about at the very beginning. Uh, you know, we want to deploy uh, that EDR that those those security agents is what I was calling them generically. But yes, we can, we can tie those in um, and it's, you know, depending on the agent, uh, for the most part, it's pretty straightforward, but we have seen some some lessons learned there as well. Awesome. Thanks. Okay, well, um, like I was saying, this will be listed on our YouTube channel um, later this afternoon or tomorrow morning, and we will send you all the recording and the deck. Um, if you're interested in any other Diopath webinars or roundtables, events, please visit our events page on our website to register. And I'd like to thank you all again and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.